Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Kingdom for today's second national semifinal game between the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Arkansas Razorbacks. Now let's meet the starting lineups. For North Carolina, at forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Kinston, North Carolina, number 42, Jerry Stackhouse. For Arkansas, at forward, a 6'6 junior from Ruston, Louisiana, number 30, Scotty Thurman. For North Carolina, at forward, a 6'6 junior from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, number 24, Dante Calabria. Arkansas at forward a 6'7 junior from Russellville, Arkansas, number 34, Corliss Williamson. For North Carolina at center, a 6'10 sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 30, Rashid Wallace. For Arkansas at center, a 6'8 senior from Memphis, Tennessee, number 40, Elmer Martin. Guard, a 6'3 senior from Garner, North Carolina, number 21, Donald Williams. For Arkansas at guard, a 6'4 senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma, number 12, Clint McDaniel. For North Carolina at guard, a 6'4 sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina, number 5, Jeff McGinnis. For Arkansas at guard, a 6'2 senior from Memphis, Tennessee, number 14, Corey Beck. And the coaches for North Carolina in his 34th season, Dean Smith. For Arkansas in his 10th season, Nolan Richardson. All right, Billy, let's set this one up with the Packer points and what to look for in this game. Well, Jim, quite a bit different than what we expected in the first basketball game. Lower quick whistle. I think that the intense defense of pressure by Arkansas is something that North Carolina's got to get to the foul line often and early, see how the referees approach it. Opposite of tracks, and I'm talking about what's in the lane. Two great post players, they have an entirely different style. Who gets control of the low post? Wallace or Williamson? Air apparent. We're talking about two players that have the ability to take over a game. Jerry Stackhouse, Scotty Thurman. Which one gets the better of this matchup? Depth charge, we're talking about the bench. Bench production has been excellent for Arkansas, something North Carolina often worries about, but they had a great game off the bench against Kentucky. We'll see what happens today. The officials, Charles Range, Tom Harrington, Gene Monchi. Mention this is the last two champions meeting here, but a first ever. Donald Williams, the most outstanding player of the 93 Final Four will take the floor against Corliss Williamson, last year's most outstanding player. First time in Final Four history. Two former outstanding players at the Final Four meet again at the promised land. And the matchup of the last two national champions has happened only one other time, and that was in 1962. 1962, you had Ohio State went in 60, Cincinnati in 61, and they went against each other in 62 with Cincinnati winning again. Carolina gets it inside, but then turns it over as Stackhouse had Razorbacks and around him. He hurt his ankle right off the bat. Jerry Stackhouse in some trouble. Outside, Elmer Martin knocks down a three, and the officials will let Stackhouse Get to the bench. How about that nice piece of sportsmanship by McDaniel? He wants to play against the best. He goes over Pat Stackhouse on the back. Let's see what happens here. I thought he got fouled twice. No call. And I said slow whistle, quick whistle. If that's an indicator, tough shape for North Carolina. They're picking up right where they left off. There's the whistle. Looked pretty clean right that, in front of exactly. us. Exactly. That one looked like it was pretty good defense. Corey Beck looks over at us and says, <laughs> he's kind of laughing. He's saying, man, let me touch somebody. Jim, we remember that defensive intensity we saw in the second half of the Virginia game. Arkansas showing what led them to the championship last year. 
That gets the call, and Wallace the turnaround. Uh, Rasheed Wallace is excellent in that low post with that turnaround jumper. You gotta put more pressure on him than that. Beck gives it up. Good passing here, Thurman free. Calabria rebound. You know, Martin's a good luck charm, Jim, as a starter. 13-0. Yeah, they don't normally count on him hitting a three to start the game. Sullivan, of course, used the Final Four experience. Williams. Nice decision by Williamson. Nothing there. There's the matchup we want to see right here. Williamson and Stackhouse. I mean, in Wallace. McDaniel, three-pointer. Unlikely sources for Arkansas power right off the bat. Stackhouse, Jim, got up and tried to walk some, but he's still down on the sidelines in trouble. Pace of the game, what we expected. Calabria, travel. We're told, first report, a bruised thigh for Stackhouse. He's coming back. Back pull-up jumper. Corey has not been looking for his uh, shot in the NCAA tournament so far, has not scored double figures yet in any game. Calabria, back out McKinnis. He'll take a three. Yes. Good tap back by Wallace. 6-5 Hogs ahead, Williamson, too strong. I think he expected more contact, Jim. Smart play by Wallace not to go after him. In the corner, Donald Williams. Well, he had 10 out of 14 from three. Back in 93, he's missed his first two beyond the arc. Scotty Furman off the shot clock. That'll be Carolina basketball. Donald Williams, of course, two 25-point games in those, final, in those final four games. Stackhouse returns. So McDaniel gets his wish. Here's a 2-2-1 full court pressure. North Carolina with 20 turnovers against Kentucky's press. Still came away with a victory. Thurman read that one just right. Stackhouse still is on a gimpy leg. Straight man inside. Looks like they're letting Wallace guard Williamson by himself. Daniel, not this time. Martin kept it alive. Smartly tipping it to Beck. Corliss jumper. Showing us a nice touch on that shot. Corliss known for low post positioning. Stackhouse. McDaniel ahead. He got a man here. Beck. Good luck, by Calabria. Wow, Tar Heels now. Good pass over McGinnis. This game's going to be in the hundreds, Jim, if they don't slow down. Somebody start hitting because defense hadn't had a chance to get in position. Donald Williams drives. His shot, he loves that leaner. Last touch by Martin, Tar Heels ball. How about the block by Calabria? Well, Beck was wide open, absolutely perfect timing by Calabria. Stackhouse again going out, maybe to get a little bit more medical attention. Matt Sullivan returns. Jim, a pace like this, a lot of times guys don't shoot well because they're losing their breath early on. They've got to settle down, get their second win, settle into some kind of pattern. Game very frenetic at this point. Guinness. Scotty Thurman sees Beck ahead. Assist for Guinness. He got back, but too late. Yep, raised the fingertips. Yep. And you've got it when you get your guard to penetrate like that, somebody else has to pull back. Sullivan in trouble. Calabria, second best in the nation from three, and Wallace with the putback. The difference between Virginia attacking Arkansas's press and North Carolina's red, North Carolina will get it over the press and then try to score. Virginia just tried to get it over the press and then get into half court defense. North Carolina now in a 2-3 zone. 
Look for Scotty Thurman. Beautiful pass. No look pass. Martin almost got it. Corliss on his shove. Corliss incredulous. We reach the break with the hogs in front. LA team doctors have told us that the father of assistant coach Lorenzo Romar has been taken by paramedics to a local urgent care center after suffering a nausea and chest pains. The speculation is that he's had a heart attack, but that is not confirmed at this point. He will be tested. Assistant coach Romar did accompany his father to the hospital. Let's send it back to Jim and Billy. Thank you, Michelle. Our thoughts and prayers with the Romar family. Let's hope for a good report on that one. Cross court passing by North Carolina, always effective against a 2 2 1 pressure. I look over, and Jerry Stackhouse has got a pad, Jim, on that five, still on the bench. Alex Dillard, number three, the Vorimots, number 22 for the Razorbacks. Wallace tipped it once and bangs it right off of Thurman. Good hustle by Wallace. Scotty Thurman, very deceptive on the inside. He gets the hands on a lot of balls, but Wallace does a very intelligent thing there, bouncing it off Scotty's leg. Carolina's made only one of its last nine. Here you see zone pressure now. But Wallace doesn't realize how open he is. Donald Williams got it to go. He had missed his first four. Stackhouse. Still out. Donald Williams ice cold last year when North Carolina failed to move to the Sweet 16. He's got to light it up here, particularly with Stockhouse on the bench. Arkansas being very patient. Thurman with McInnes reaching in. They give McInnes with the hand slap. Jim, so far, I would say quick whistle in this basketball game. But Arkansas really hasn't had a chance to turn up the defensive pressure. Dillard out there on the side looking for that jumper. There you go. Wow, way too strong. McDaniel and Calabria run it. Sullivan snowbirding. He'll shoot two. Remots on the hat. Sullivan just happy to be here. Had a very serious back problem early in the year. That's good hands by Calabria. Excellent hit ahead as Sullivan released. Something always good to do against a team like Arkansas that wants to put all that pressure on, Jim. Release a man. Don't allow them to send five men to the boards. And you remember this look right here. On the line at the Superdome with 20 seconds to go against Michigan. Made the first, missed the second. Right. Redshirted last year. Didn't think he'd get much playing time. Came back this year, a couple of bulging discs, had to have a six-hour operation and missed the first 21 games. Carolina with its first lead, 11-10. Remots. There's a release to Wallace. Wallace with Dillard there. Why? Oh, the big man does a 360 on the small man. <laughs> Yeah, Wallace is getting fired up, Jim, with plays like that. They need to get that ball down to Corliss some to keep him honest. Remots again. <laughs> North Carolina wanting to go long, keeping Arkansas honest on the rebound. Yep, they have players releasing early. Yep. Eight-point run for the Tar Heels. Make it ten. Without Stackhouse. Shooting strictly on the perimeter. Corliss is not touching it. They got to get the ball down to the man inside. He got him here, and he can take him to the next next level. McDaniel, three-pointer, his second already. And McDaniel has not been having much offensive production in the tournament so far, Jim. Another guy that hadn't scored in double figures. 
But a man who can get it done on the defensive end. Without question. Solid screen, good step out. Calabria inside the Sullivan. Good passing. North Carolina has their heads turned. Arkansas on the attack already. Look at that range. Hillard. I don't think they've seen a shot in Seattle <laughs> launch like that since downtown Freddie Brown. We'll be right back. Talking up victories at Carolina for 34 years. He loved those Reagan years. <laughs> Looks like he's a Republican there, Jim. Well, I don't know. He won Bush a championship Reagan. with Clinton in office, All 93. Right. They've got some subs in for Carolina's. Wicker, number 45. And Pierce Landry with the ball right now, number 22. Corey Beck, Dwight Stewart double-teaming McGinnis. Great job by McGinnis to fight through the double-team in the corner. He ended up drawing a foul, Jim, but he was in serious problem. Excellent trapping by Arkansas. They call it the other way around. They call it on McKinnis, his second. Well, the trap set that up. Excellent defense by Arkansas. Razorbacks have in 6'11", sophomore center Lee Wilson, who's getting better by the game in this tournament. Well, Stewart in the game now. Dillard out. Remember, Stewart's a guy who can step out and hit the threes. Here's Wilson, right back to Remox for the three. Tip into Stewart. Wilson tipped it to Stewart. Going right over the top of the press. Kind of negated that pressure. Don't allow double teams with the dribble. Staying with Calabria. Doesn't want him open for any of those threes. Stackhouse. Who's dying all? Daniel. Tie up situation. Arrow is Arkansas. Pretty good job by Wilson just to hang on to that ball, Jim. No space whatsoever on the pass. Nolan Richardson told me back in January when we went in for the Kentucky game. As we see, Remox knocked down a three. That Lee Wilson has a great chance of being the best big man in Arkansas history. Strong At that time, state. you didn't see it, you know, but since then, we're seeing signs. How about Remox hitting that jumper? Talking about the Kentucky game, he was supposed to start and had a kidney stone problem. Here's Landry, 22 for the heels, answers at the other end with a two. Pretty good perimeter shooting in the game right now. Rematch on one wing, Stewart on the other. He's got a quick release. Stewart. Swicker had position. Stewart, seven threes in the opening round for this club. Double team on Zwicker. Calabria cutting through. Wide open McGinnis. Three-pointer. What we're seeing is the European philosophy. Penetrate with a dribble. Punch on out for the three. America accepting something that they've done so well in another continent. Stay in the zone. Beck dumps it into Wilson. Oh. Zwicker had already turned around thinking Beck was going to shoot a three. Well, Wilson did a good job not turning around himself. Yeah. It looked like it was going to be a three. And by the time Zwicker got back around, he hacked Wilson. Donald Williams and Rashid return. McInnes and Zwicker out. Jimmy, you can see two different philosophies as to how to operate a bench. North Carolina operating primarily position at a time. They've got a sub guard, a sub forward, and a sub center. Arkansas substituting their entire bench. You know, likely to go down 10 or 11 deep. Almost platooning an entire team at a time. Both effective. Wilson only 50% from the line. Bangs that one home. 18 and 5 against Syracuse. That really, when you start thinking about a Williamson foul out of the game, Wilson did a great job there. Again, the 2-2-1, two -two and they still go man-to-man -man on the press. Landry in trouble, got it back to Stackhouse. He'll finish. Oh, 
Calabria, feet planted, air ball. He saw, and that, the horn sounded, that ball hit nothing, Jim. And the reason for that being so quick is you remember the trouble they had getting it over half court. So good job by Arkansas. <laughs> Twenty two twenty North Carolina North Carolina's probably played more zone this year than any North Carolina team in Dean Smith's tenure there certainly the last 20 years Stewart gives Arkansas the lead great release the press has taken a lot of time off that clock so North Carolina doesn't have that much time to operate in Nice job by Wilson. Didn't let penetration. Stackhouse on the board with a three-pointer. He's really improved his range on his jump shot. He's primarily a 15-foot shooter when he got to college. Wilson. Stewart chases it down. They reset. The 35, it'll be Arkansas ball when we come back. North Carolina, 25, 23. Carolina has put the clamps on Arkansas, 35%. Thurman has not scored. Carolina did the same thing to Kentucky last week. You're exactly right, Jim. Tremendous a field goal percentage defense for North Carolina. Surprisingly, Arkansas this year, they have given up 44% from a field goal percentage, and with the exception of that great defense against Virginia, they have a tendency to allow people to get some shots off. Not like that ball club last year that played suffocating defense. Good pass in here. Wallace, they call it a tie-up, but this time the heels will get it. Corey Beck got hit in the eye. Referee's got to hold on a little bit. He's, he's hurting in the eye. There you see Rasheed Wallace goes up, gets all ball and then some. He's going to stay in the game. Tough kid. We saw him play 20 of 25 minutes with four fouls last week against Memphis State, and then a touch foul. That's really both of his fouls now have been touch fouls. You remember the first one? Well, he can't get discouraged here. You're exactly right, Jim. Both of them right in front of us, really touch fouls, and that's that deal again. Quick whistle, slow whistle. Hard to get good pressure on if you can't do a little bit of checking. Nolan, I'm sure, is going to get up and start talking to these officials. He can't afford to let that happen much more. Williams steps in for two. Good block out on Wallace, and Wallace is accepting blockouts, Jim. Williamson's been out for a while now. In the man to man, Arkansas seemed to like with this lineup the zone a little bit better because Stewart could step out and get those open looks. Scotty Thurman being guarded by Williams. North Carolina jumps out with a double team. Four on the shot clock. Beck, bad eye and all. Too strong. Williamson now comes in. He'll be checking in on the next whistle. Trying to get the ball inside to Rashid. Got it there. Soft touch. The two outstanding sophomores. They know each other's game. Eight points for Wallace. Carolina four-point lead with six minutes to go in the half. Good double screen. Rematch can't get the ball. There it is. Rematch three. Right Good down the barrel. Jimmy's very positive looking for his shot out there. Came off the screens well. Bad pass. Razorbacks now with a chance to take the lead. Down 27-26. Stewart working inside. And the Hogs lead by one. Terrific job. He took advantage of his size and chest. Go right over Stackhouse. Outside Williams. Steps in for a two. 
Carolina back ahead by one. Long stretch without a whistle. Guys are showing effects of it too, Jim. Wallace getting tired inside. Wilson. Last touch by Carolina. Heels will bring in Sullivan and Calabria. Four subs for the Hogs with Corliss Darnell Robinson for the first time, number 44. Alex Dillard and Clint McDaniel back. Corliss out for six and a half minutes on the game clock. Jimmy averages 31 minutes a game, so sits down about nine. Nolan Richardson really has the ability to use this bench. He knows how to do it. Thurman missing. Thurman still hasn't scored. With 440 remaining in the half. This is a three. Donald Williams got Robinson on him. Robinson not able to stay out there with him. It's hard to believe that Williams is getting open so much, Jim. He's got a lot of good looks at the basket in his first half. Wow, wow, why? Well, underneath, rejected by Rashid. You don't see that often. Calabria finds McGinnis. Wallace comes back out with it. Smart play on his part. Didn't have the good footwork, and he's very tired right now, particularly after that effort against Williamson. Williams again. Just beats the shot clock. I cannot believe that he's getting so open. Dillard. Rasheed Wallace can't even breathe, Jim. He cannot get over half court. Oh. Taken away. Well, this was a little dose of uh, Scotty Thurman's own medicine from last year. From the same point, beat the shot clock here. Can't afford to leave that man open, and there's the block. Hey, Billy, how about the two stars for Arkansas, including this man, Thurman? Well, you know Scotty will get it heated up, but they've got two points between them. Corliss down inside against the 2-3 North Carolina zone. Corliss with two. Thurman shut out so far. Carolina enjoying its largest lead, 35-28. Alex Dillard. Dillard losing a little confidence when he put up that one from downtown and was yanked out of the game. Shimon Williams, number 15, into the Carolina lineup. Trying to do too much coming in off the bench. Nick Not Daniel his game. Ahead. He's a fast one. Gets it back. Dillard, who's missed all four of his shots so far. Now make it five. Tank pulls it down. Tank with the turnaround. That was a wild throw. Robinson trying to do too much, as was Williams on that last play. You come in off the bench, all the coach wants from him are not stats, he wants minutes. Quicker. Both teams not taking advantage of getting the ball in the hands of their key players. And a violation that time. Arkansas has really gone cold. It's missed its last nine shots. Jim, you cannot afford to come in off the bench with guys that coaches are just trying to get some minutes out of and have those players be an integral part of the shot selection. Now, Robinson has really taken bad shots for Arkansas. Williams tried to come in off the bench and make a big play, as did Swicker. There's where you want the ball. Stackhouse. <laughs> Neither team really settling down on the offensive end of the floor to execute. Been a really of a scramble type offense. They got McKinnis back in there quickly for Shimon Williams, who made just a couple of trips down the floor. Yep. They're, they're trying to get a few minutes here out of Zwicker as Wallace sits down. Another shot for Williams. He's fired up 10 attempts. Swicker into the second row, trying to save it. 
See the shot? That's the shot they want. Zwicker, not the quickest of foot, but gave a lot of heart. Tremendous effort there. Young man played in the McDonald's High School All-American game. So it's not like he just uh, showed up at North Carolina. 138 to go in the half. Arkansas stuck on 28 for a while, shooting 28% from the field. They've almost forgotten a guy down in the post named Williamson. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. They've got to be thinking about him. Thurman gets his first bucket. And a three-pointer at that. The rainbow by Thurman cuts it to four. Beautiful head fake by McGinnis on that double team. They assumed he was going to give up the ball. Sullivan, boy, up high and almost dropped. Oh, they didn't see. Scotty was wide open. Again, Jim, bad shot selection from the bench. Stewart. 45 seconds to go. Williams left open. Been saying that all game long. North Carolina doing to Arkansas what they did to Kentucky. Cross-court passing against that double-team pressure. Finding good open perimeter shooters like Calabrian Williams. Thurman. Ball foul on Arkansas's Thurman. Well, I thought Scotty got all ball there. I think he agrees with me. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Pat O'Brien, Quinn Buckner, and Mike Shashevsky will have their comments and analysis of the first half. Plus, game one winning coach Jim Herrick from UCLA. Here's Landry comes in. Donald Williams has scored Carolina's last 10 points. Of course, Jim, what he is is very patient to go ahead and get in an offset position when the ball is on the opposite side of the court. By doing that, he's in a position to catch and deliver the shot right away rather than worrying about his footwork after he touches the ball. Good experienced player there. Sullivan will shoot one more. We were talking about his long journey back to the Final Four. He really was able to rehab after that surgery by swimming. I'm talking rigorous swimming exercises. Enough that Smith told him, I'd like to see you make the swim team by the time you get back. Scotty Thurman, the ball in his hands. Eight seconds to go. Landry's got a problem. Finally, they find Corliss. Double team. And he Walk. traveled. Plenty of time now for North Carolina to get something off. Dean Smith quickly puts back in his starters. Gets Donald Williams, McGinnis, and Stackhouse and in for the final 3.6. See if Arkansas picks up full court to make North Carolina try to put the ball on the floor, occupying that time. Here they are, full court. Sullivan throws the baseball pass off the backboard. Stewart launches it. Is it enough? Go! Just inside the mid-court strike. Jimmy, do they count it a three if it's on the other side of half court? Give them four. <laughs> Unbelievable. You remember Damon Stoudemire did this last year, not this far, right before the half. Well, a good never say quit. What a delivery. Oh. What a jolt. That's the end of the first half with the score. North Carolina 38, Arkansas 34. And CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message. And a word from your local station. CAA Men's Basketball National Semifinal Game is sponsored by Goodyear, number one in tires. Intel, look for the Intel Inside Pentium Processor Symbol. And by 100% Cotton Wrinkle-Free Dockers. Esteball, he's going to start penetrating. That's the key to their offense. So he starts penetrating, and he kicks it off to Landry. Okay, but McGinnis stays in the play. Now Landry hits the ball inside to Swicker. There's Landry with the ball. Swicker's going to get it inside right there. 
We call this inside action, and then he gets it outside to Calabria, passing it out to McGinnis, who stayed in the play for the three, and that's why they're a great three-point shooting team. All right, Quinn, you got the same play. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, what else you see in there. If you keep an eye on Arkansas, the thing that they do is they chase the basketball, and as long as you chase the basketball when you're trapping, there's a double team, somebody's got to be open. Mike's exactly right. I think there has to be a little more discipline in that defense. You're like uh, Siskel and Ebert of basketball here. We want to bring uh, Jim Herrick. Congratulations, Coach, on your win in the first game. Thank you, Pat, very much, Quinn, Mike. It's more fun this way, isn't it? A couple of things that's get out of the way. First of all, uh, your assistant, Lorenzo Romar's father, was hospitalized. Do you have an update for us? Yes, Davis Romar, Lorenzo's father, they were, took him to the hospital. He was complaining of chest pains and and uh, he's in stable condition right now, and they're examining him right now. Our thoughts are with him. Now to the game. Tyus Edney's wrist, is it a problem for you? Well, he said he couldn't shoot in the second half, so we'll have to ice it and work on it over the over the one day we have off. <laughs> as long as he can penetrate. That's, that's all he needs to do. Go I'll to the tell you what, let's all take a look at the uh, highlights of this game, because uh, I know Coach wants to see Tyus' uh, dipsy do shot, as you called it. Uh, Ed O'Bannon was hot early on. Well, what you know about UCLA, but you can't find it out until you watch them in person. They change engines off the court as well as anybody I've ever seen. Great quickness. And Jim, have you seen enough tape of Big Country this week? Oh, he was he was fabulous uh, in the first half, and and uh, we tried to guard him a little bit better in the second half. He got seven in the second half. Charles O'Bannon, Mike. Yeah, watch Charles. He just drives, and that penetrating ability uh, creates a lot of opportunities for UCLA. Well, I tell you, Big Country Reeves gets it right there, but I thought near the end of the game, he started to wear down. UCLA did a good job keeping pressure on him. Here it comes, Coach. That's it. The last eight minutes, Pat, I said, take him, take him, take him. That's all I said. How big of a stud is Tyus said to him? He is really making a statement in this tournament, is he not? He's had a terrific tournament, and I'm glad the country gets to see the kind of basketball player he really is because he's done that with force for four years, but... You know, with Ed O'Bannon on the team and Stoudemire uh, at Arizona, he's kind of been overshadowed, but Missouri, uh, Mississippi State, UConn, and tonight he's, he's come up huge. And now he's, uh, I hate to say this, kind of the darling of the tournament, uh, of the country, too. Hey, Mike, excuse me, Mike, do you buy a player like that dinner every night? <laughs> well, I used to buy Hurley dinners like that because he makes you look really good. I'm sorry, I told Clint. him after the Missouri game, I told the media, I'm taking him home. He's going to sleep <laughs> in my bed tonight. Coach, let's talk about what I think Ed O'Bannon has done for your team. It appears to me that his, his presence defensively, or the, that thought and that toughness permeates your team. Give me your he thoughts. He really is a great all-around player who's very unselfish. On the offensive end and defensive end, he came in the huddle when Henderson and, uh, and Zedek had four fouls. He said, I want to watch him. I want to watch big country. Get, let me have him. And for two, three minutes, he took him from the seven-minute mark, 740, allowed us to get inside six minutes, and I could come back with Zedek and then have Henderson ready to play. So it helped us a lot. Let's talk about the second half in this game. Coach, what do you, what do you see in the second half for Arkansas, North well, Carolina? Well, I think that uh, they've got to stop the three-point shooting. You know, Donald Williams, if you, if you forget about him, boom, 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 and now you're down. He's got 13 points on the game. Mike, your thoughts? Well, they got to they got to stay with Williams, but then on, on the offensive end, Thurman and Williamson have to shoot the ball for Arkansas in order to win. They, they got to get it inside. If they don't get something inside, then, they're then you can pressure the three-point shooters, and Arkansas will struggle with that. All right, good job, guys. Uh, earlier today, in case you missed it, in Minneapolis, the women held their national semifinals. Tennessee defeated... Other end, Stewart, an electrifying exclamation point to finish the first half. Arkansas now down four. Worry back. That quickly, it's a one-point game. Worry back looking very comfortable on that shot. Stewart in the starting lineup for Martin here in the second half game could take a different complexion. Turnover, the ninth committed by the Tar Heels. Oh, and Arkansas with a chance on that break to take the lead comes away empty. They only had three turnovers in the first half. Stackhouse. Three-pointer, his second of the game. He's got six points. Corey Beck somewhat upset. Felt he didn't get back on defense the way he wanted to after hitting that jumper. North Carolina in the man-to-man. -man. Not guarding Williamson on the perimeter is Wallace. Williamson has position. Now they get it to him. There you go. 
Both teams have settled down here in the second half looking much more organized. First half was a matter of bad shooting percentage by Arkansas because of bad shot selection. Hold on Stewart. And here's Corliss posting up there. Not a guy in the country can allow Corliss Williamson to get the low post because he uses that wide body so well. Rashid Wallace plays behind him, trying to count on his shot blocking ability, but you just can't get to that wide body. I expect Arkansas to go down inside time and time again in the second half. It sure looked easy on that last one. He makes it look easy because he works so hard for position. Screen by Stackhouse frees him for a free. Donald Williams. Donald Williams, three point basket for North Carolina. Stewart inside his range. Didn't take the shot. <laughs> inside 50. Yeah, feet. really. I was going to ask you if you can find that. Wallace says, get that out of here. And Stackhouse ahead to Calabria. Good hustle. There's the double down. Inside Corliss. And one. Again, Rashid Wallace is going to be taken to school if he thinks he can play Corliss Williamson behind. Of course, Rashid used to play in some excellent postmen. Tim Duncan from Wake Forest, Joe Smith from Maryland. And they're outstanding players, but I don't think either one of them in the low post any better than this man right here, and maybe not as good. Corliss Williamson, who broke his wrist in last year's championship game and didn't even know it until about five weeks later and had to sit out the whole summer. His weight, in fact, ballooned to over 280 pounds being inactive. Well, I would have had to ask him, Jim, you didn't break your leg, you broke your wrist. He should have been running, you know? It's the first time he hadn't been actively involved with basketball in the summer, he said, in a long, long time. Maybe in his life. Uh, McDaniel slipped and committed the foul. And again, you see this movement by North Carolina. Dribble penetration and then throwing the shot, the, the, the pass back outside for the three. Since they have four players on the perimeter that can all shoot that three, it's tough to defend. Stackhouse throws oh! by Williamson. Thurman. Oh, he thought it was clean. Oh, Scotty is so quick getting his hands on the ball inside. That's the second time, Jim, he's got called on that foul. Well, it's George number Scotty Thurman, second, third. Boy, aside from Corliss's broken wrist, Corey Beck had knee surgery. McDaniel in a pickup game two weeks after the title game. Broke a thumb, had to have an operation. Sheet while well shooting too. Darnell Robinson had knee surgery. And Jim, you know, Corey Beck stepped on some coral over in Hawaii. That required six stitches in his foot. And I think that's the real reason why Nolan Richardson hadn't had a chance to have this ball club on all cylinders this year with those nagging injuries. But they still 30 wins. <laughs> 31 yeah. and six. Same number of wins as a year ago when they won the title in Charlotte. Stewart posting up on Stackhouse. He's beat him once down here. Now a second time. Another one in the first half. So we know that Stewart can shoot from the outside. I think he's finding it comfortable using his size advantage on Stackhouse. Ooh, Wallace. Close one. A little out of range there. Donald Williams would like to be in one more step. Arkansas trailed in the second half in the first four tournament games. Trailed by four to Texas Southern, three to Syracuse. And there's Scotty Thurman tying the game at 47. A team that came from 12 back in the second half against Memphis and six down second half to Virginia. As many as seven down in this half to Carolina. Oh, uh. Back ahead. Back for the lead. Williamson on the follow. Corliss Williamson is a great runner of the floor, Jim. He carries that big body 90 feet. 
Dean Smith screaming, he's hand checking. Calabria three pointer. Nice run for Arkansas here. A 10 1 Razorback run. Thurman. Ooh, his favorite shot comes up short. Dean Smith telling his squad to push the ball up the floor. Nobody coming to meet the pass. This really wears Rasheed Wallace down. Stackhouse. Third three-pointer. North Carolina staying in man-to-man. -man. They may have to go to that zone, Jim, to just to save a little energy defensively. A push, they say, actually on Wallace. I thought also Calabria reached in, but they give it to Wallace. And the whistle brings us for the first, to the first official timeout of the second half. One point, Carolina Lee. Tonight night against the winner of this one. And Billy, how about the Razorbacks coming Jim, out here in the second half? Check this man, number 34. The best man, big man in the world at doing this is Carl Malone. But on the college level, nobody be does it better than Cornish Williamson. A big man with a lot of power taking off and getting down court before the guards. And there is the zone defense by North Carolina. Daniel. We're seeing a different shooting scene here in the second half. I think the reason for that, Jim, is Nolan Richardson, and this is a nice move on his part, you know, he had everybody playing in that first half. A lot of unusual lineups. He stuck right with his starting team here in the second half, and their shot selection is so much better. Here comes the traps. <laughs> Williamson got a piece. And now Rasheed Wallace doing a lot of elbow and he's going to pick up a cheap foul here if he doesn't watch it. Two three zone. Williamson, what a move. Wow. 54-50 Arkansas. He turned Wallace around on that one. Calabria, three-pointer. Excellent spin move, and what made it so effective is that Corliss did not use his arm to go ahead and lock Wallace. He got called for a foul. Just an excellent spin move. Drop step right inside. North Carolina stays man to man. And they move Stackhouse on, on Corliss Williamson. This will be hand to hand. Arkansas, be patient. Even though Stackhouse has got some quickness, he can go fooling. 15-4, flurry by Arkansas. It's a lead, 54-50. 2-3 zone. McInnes. North Carolina really cold. Collision. Got three on the floor, and it looks like Stackhouse, the slowest one, getting up. Stackhouse going on right in between, splits. Beck gets down underneath him. Corliss comes over from the weak side. Third on Beck, Stackhouse shakes it off. Beck, who always seems to be walking a fine line between staying in the game and fouling out. Well, what he did, Jim, in that Memphis game was amazing because he had great defensive intensity. He had the ball in his hands a lot. He had the four fouls, and yet he was able to stay on the floor and with a difference in that ball game. Here is the AP All-America team, Stackhouse. The first Carolina first-teamer since J.R. Reed in 88 when J.R. was a sophomore. Wallace on a tap back. Calabria set up for the three. 
There's Beck with that great rebounding ability as a guard, blocking Stackhouse out. Thurman. McGinnis gets his team on a run here. Every shot has been contested. That's one you have to finish off. You see how effectively Arkansas is working the ball now, Jim, with his starting lineup on the floor. Nothing like what we saw in the first half. Nope, didn't see much of that in the first nope. half either. 56-51 Arkansas. You cannot play behind him. Calabria on a previous trip had a chance to tie it from three-point land, but he's 0 for 4 in the game after shooting 52% on the season. North Carolina now is starting to take some bad shots themselves. Calabria, the leading three-point percentage shooter in the country. Daniel. Ball on the line, Carolina ball. And they'll go to the benches. Corliss with 11 points in this half to put the Razorbacks ahead. This is the inspiration. Sound, Seattle doing another outstanding job at hosting the Final Four, the third time since 1984, 84, 89, 95. Shooting percentages for Arkansas changing dramatically, Billy. Exactly double what they had. They were shooting 30% in the first half, 60% in the second. It's been great shot selection and really utilizing Corliss Williamson inside. Scotty Thurman steals it to Beck. Oh. Beck on the other side comes away without any. Carolina now has missed its last six. Three and a half minutes without a field goal. Donald Williams. Everything's being rushed by North Carolina. They stay in the man-to-man -man defense. Now it's Sullivan down there on Corliss Williamson. Dean Smith trying again to get a couple of minutes here. On the blocks, Williamson. And Rashid alone underneath. Sullivan did a pretty good job. Took Corliss Williamson a step away from where he wanted to be on that turnaround. And Arkansas staying in the zone. Pierce Landry, former JV player at Carolina. They whip it around on the perimeter. Ten on the shot clock. Got to beat it now. Landry can fire it. Uh -huh. Stewart doing a great job, Jim, on the defensive oh. glass. And it will be turned back over to North Carolina, but he's keeping Wallace off the boards. Through the over rule. Keeps it with the heels. Davor Remots comes back in. Billy, he hit a couple of shots in the first half from three-point land. Beck goes out. And because they had no time on that, try to make a tough play. Isn't the Arkansas interesting, Jim? They're out-rebounded there by their opponents on the year. But when you look at this club, you say, how is that possible? You got so many guys who go up on the boards, good bench. Stewart. Landry got caught. Turns it over for a second straight time, but Arkansas returns the favor. Double dribble. Tomorrow, the RCA Player of the Year show at 12 o'clock Eastern time, followed by the McDonald's High School All-Star Game. Then bumps and jumps in the women's national title game, Tennessee and UConn. North Carolina will have to figure out a way to get a little bit slower pace to get some good shots off. Backhouse, former MVP of that McDonald's High School All-America game, will go to the line. One of our scouts down there, Mikey Arnold, who works for us, said Vince Carter has looked awesome in St. Louis this week. He'll be playing tomorrow, and next year he'll be playing for North Carolina. Yep, young man from Florida. 
Stackhouse, nice passing on the interior down inside. Oh, Stewart to the bench. Wilson in. Stackhouse, tremendous ACC tournament. Not enough to offset the incredible play of Randolph Childress. But right behind uh, Joe Smith of Maryland this year is the leading vote getter for all conference in that league. 56-52, Hogs. Nine and a half remaining. First time North Carolina was going to jump trap. And Bonnie walked, but no call, and Williamson cashes in. Well, he's locking in about six feet from the basket and just controlling his second half. Another turnover forced on the double team. McDaniel flings it to Williamson. Two more. 60-52, Arkansas's biggest lead. Calabria still can't get a three. Stackhouse with a whistle. And will shoot two. At the King Dome in Seattle. Arkansas trailed by as many as seven in the first half. And again in the second half, it got up to seven. But they fought back the Razorbacks to take an eight-point lead with just 8.58 remaining. Jim, we talked about these clubs, all four teams in the Final Four this year, starting off their conference seasons with losses. Everybody can remember this Arkansas club in their very first game this year against Massachusetts, where they just were drubbed up in Springfield. A lot different ball club right now. Here's a nice move by Nolan Richardson. Takes Corliss Williamson out, give him a little rest. He wants him ready to go down that last six minutes. That leaves the two sophomore towers inside, Wilson and Robinson. Not usually on the court at the same time. Really like the way that Nolan Richardson has orchestrated this game. Everybody got in the first half, tried to wear North Carolina down. Second half, until right now, really stuck with that basic starting lineup. Now using a little time. the difference in shot selection this second half compared to the first. Remots gets it back. Swatted away again. Rashid forcefully sending that one out of there. Stackhouse three-pointer. They are just contesting every jump shot. Stackhouse, great hustle, but had a foot on the line. Pierce Landry comes in, and Billy... Calabria, 52% again on the season from beyond the arc, 0 for 6. Uh, Jim, I haven't seen a jump shot in this second half that North Carolina has been able to take that didn't have a man right in their face. It's really affecting. Uh, North Carolina overall has missed its last 10 from the field. Well, when you consider that, they probably aren't in that bad of shape, down to 6. Scotty Thurman, so patient, so unselfish. He passed up a, a shot you yep. would think he'd take from out there. Right. They'll reset the 35 with the kick. The shot clock has gotten down to five. We'll be right back. Arkansas 60, North Carolina 54. Corliss Williamson, different story the second half but been sitting now for a couple of minutes. Carolina last hit a field goal with 15-10 remaining in the second half. Clock now reads 7.44. And Jim, with Corliss Williamson having a great second half, Rasheed Wallace has not had a point since 6-10 left in the first half. Wow. Saved by Landry. Remots gets it back. Well, Wallace not aggressively going for the ball there. Has to anticipate the kickback. It's interesting how the good execution by Arkansas took North Carolina out of their zone. Thurman three, tipped up by Wilson Robinson. 
Carolina eight down with seven to go. Carolina over eight minutes without a field goal. So now getting much more aggressive by Arkansas. Really bumping out on the perimeter because there's nothing down in the center that's getting it done. Robinson stripped it away and Wallace, Wallace hurt his hand on that. Ball goes down inside. Looked like a chop foul right there. Wallace certainly felt so. Just call it out of bounds on Arkansas. 62-54, Razorbacks. See, you just don't have a shot. First half, they were getting a lot of easy looks. Got to beat the shot clock now. Got to put it up. McInnes. Excellent defense by Arkansas. Remots. Lee Wilson. Last basket by Robinson. This one by Wilson. The sophomore centers give Arkansas a 10-point bulge. Calabria, will he get one? Not this time. Look at Remach hustling down the court and going to the wing. This has been a great second half by Arkansas, Jim. Just terrific play. Both ends of the floor. Good shot selection. Tough defense on the ball. And now they're using a little clock. Good heady play by Beck, the leader. Remots three. And a foul called on Stackhouse. What you see right now is a huge height advantage because the two twin towers, Jim, one occupies Wallace, the other one just too big on the opposite side. We saw Wilson on the putback. That time we saw Robinson over Stackhouse. That's the third on Stackhouse and only the third foul of the half on Carolina. Talk about the Razorbacks play in this half for the game. They've only turned it over five times. Wilson. They can't stop the size. And Carlos Williamson's on the bench. Nolan Richardson enjoying the way his team's playing. May say, hey, I'll rest him. That young man, of course, set the tempo here in the second half. Jeff McInnes collects his third. Again, only the fourth. So three away from the one and one. 527 remaining. Robinson in the first half would have taken a jump shot there. In the second half, he wisely gives it up. Entirely different play by Arkansas in the second half. Solid screen that time on Wilson gets the foul. Dean Smith knows he's got to go ahead and get some points from somewhere. Fortunately for him, he's going to be able to go to the foul line without an Arkansas defender in somebody's face. It'll be a one and one at the other end. You know, the last two years in the NCAA tournament, look at the coaches Nolan Richardson has knocked out head-to-head. -head. John Thompson, Steve Fisher, Lou Olson, Mike Krzyzewski, Bayheim, Finch, and Jones in that list. Jim, you pointed out at the top of the show, this Arkansas club has not lost a game in the NCAA tournament since you go all the way back to that North Carolina loss in the, in the regionals the year North Carolina went all the way. Sweet 16 game in 93. Sixty-four fifty-six. Starting to use the clock. Stackhouse, you can see him down inside. Wilson just is keeping him out of there. Calabria knocks it out of bounds. Under five minutes remaining. Dean Can you Smith. believe it? Still, Carolina has not hit a field goal since 15-10 remaining in the half. And now Nolan Richardson said, I'm coming back with the troops. Got terrific play here in the second half from his twin towers, and Corliss Williamson comes back totally rested. Dean Smith over in the sideline, knowing his club's in real trouble. Had much more success here in Seattle when he came as a player back in 52 with Kansas. They won the national championship with Clyde Lavellet being the MOP. 
Dean Smith in that game back in 52, title game in this city of Seattle. He played 29 seconds. He said, I have the highlight reel to prove it. <laughs> well, made him along with uh, Bob Knight, a guy that played for a championship team and also coached one, the yep. only two. Foul against Arkansas's McDaniel. To set up another one and one. Carolina got free throws on its last trip. We'll shoot again here in the one-on-one -on -one situation, but the field goal situation lingers. Now, Jim, the key for Carolina now to get back in this game is not on the offensive end or on the foul line. They are now going to have to force Arkansas to turn some things over and get some points off their defense, which they have not been able to do this entire game because of the great ball handling that Arkansas has had and the lack of turnovers. Wallace with that one attempt in the last 22 minutes. McInnes gets them both. North Carolina is certainly not as fresh as Arkansas because Nolan's been able to put his three, three of his starters on the bench for the last four or five minutes. Beck exchanging signals with McDaniel. Now he flips it on a wing to him. Working around for Thurman's three. And Williamson, big hustle play right there. Wallace could have had that one, it well, looked like. He may be tired, he may just have gotten out hustle. But in either case, it's Arkansas's ball. Wallace Williamson has made him disappear here in the second half. He's got him pinned again. McGinnis called for the hold away from the ball, and that's his fourth. And that's the under four minute timeout. North Carolina has missed its last 12 shots in almost 11 and a half minutes without a field goal. Billy Packer, shots made before the half, but you said as they were exiting the floor at halftime, that one's going to come back and really kill the heel. I think it really set a stage, Jim, for the second half, but not only in the point differential, but I think that refocused Arkansas as to what they needed to do. It's been interesting to be a fly in the wall in that locker room at Arkansas where they only you know, shot 30%. Crazy shot selection. They have really locked in here in the second half. Williamson has position on Stackhouse. Back out now to Stewart. Three-pointer. Got it. Inside-outside game. You've got to help out on Williamson. Stackhouse too small. Williamson, unselfish nature, puts it right back outside. This is great execution by Arkansas in the second half. Boy, Stewart has come up big off the bench with 15, and McDaniel called for that one. Now, Nolan Richardson doesn't want fouls here. You want the clock to run. There was the inside-outside game. Wallace doesn't get there in time, and we have seen... Stewart, a 40% plus free throw, I mean, three-point shooter his entire career. Seven threes in the opening game this year in the NCAA tournament. He's got a great stroke. One and one. Kind of interesting, Jim. North Carolina only has five team fouls. So, you know, even though they've been playing man-to-man, -man, it hasn't been that aggressive. And Arkansas has been able to do about what they want to them. Get us asking for some pressure and double teams. Wallace bumped the body of Williamson. Again, that's only the sixth, so Arkansas to inbound. Hey, Jim, there was a good example of something that Wallace is going to be an outstanding player. But the difference between a man, Williamson, and Wallace, who has a lot of maturing to do, when everybody talks about going into the NBA, I mean, it's, it's like night and day. Wallace just not quite as strong or anywhere near as strong as Williamson. Oh, another overrule, and this one's going to Carolina. Stackhouse using his quickness. A nice move by Arkansas. They're not going to let North Carolina have anything easy. They're still pressing. Them. Three minutes remaining. That press takes a lot of time off the clock. And a steal on the double team. They take it away from Rashid. Pretty quick hands. Yep. Now, what Arkansas is doing here, Jim, is pressing full court. Even though they've got the lead, what it does, take a lot of time off the clock. North Carolina can't attack quickly. 
So they're using eight seconds or so just to get the ball over half court. It's only 2.45 remaining, and the clock is stopped. The yes, clock it has. is not operating. Shot clock is stopped. Game clock is moving. Now it's started, but it's too late. Three-pointer, Donald Williams and a timeout call. Had to have been four or five seconds before the game clock kicked in the gear. Timeout called by Carolina. Williams knocks it down to six. It's three. This out, Billy, with the clock shot in set. The game clock was at 2.47 and not moving at this point. And Nolan Richardson didn't realize it at this time. Now, after the shot goes in, he wanted to get the attention of the referee saying, hey, they should have stopped action. They didn't stop action. Then you see there's the shot clock going, and the shot will go up here, and it's a big three for North Carolina. Hard to believe that they have put themselves down just six, and you have to think back to the SEC Tournament Championship game where Kentucky was down nine with a minute and 34 to go. And again, the game clock was out at the same time as you saw the shot clock there, so a good six, seven seconds elapsed before they kicked it into action. So you watch this now. They've already had the ball for a couple of seconds. Right. Four, five. And of course, if six, you're Nolan Richardson, you want to get as much time off of that clock as possible. It's showing 232 all the way around. Well, now. they did. They yeah. adjusted it then. They took an extra four off the clock. And that's one of those deals where you can go to the monitor in regard to a timing error. Double team and a timeout. Beck was in trouble, and he called the time. 2.22. Arkansas leading by six with the ball. And, Billy, what do you look for now? Two timeouts each team. Well, Jim, the two back-to-back -back timeouts, one Arkansas didn't want to call, but they, wanted, they didn't want to lose possession, helped North Carolina a lot because that was a long rest for the Carolina team that's now in pressure. Look for a jump trap now by North Carolina. Here they come. And Arkansas should look to try to score against this defense. Well, they better look in a hurry. Shot clock down to two. Stewart probably the one over the back. Yep. Boy, this Stewart. Very dangerous for Arkansas not to look to score, Jim. They're trying to be too path passive. And able, they've got themselves now in a situation of potentially being in a four-point ball game. Double bonus the rest of the way for North Carolina. They'll shoot two. Carolina, excellent free throw shooting team, as we pointed out in the NCAA tournament, shooting almost 75%. Jeff McGinnis shooting two. McGinnis. Big miss. That puts you back in the situation where you got to be thinking threes. But it allows full court pressure on the made free throw. Williams reached in. Arkansas going to face some one-and-one -one trips without, now. Without question, Dean Smith has been a master at extending games when they get down to the wire. When he had the four corners, he tried to reduce the time. And obviously, the shot clock eliminated that. But he will go for a foul situation. Stewart, a 65% free throw shooter. Short. What a box out. Wallace retrieves it. Carolina with some life here. Stackhouse to the hole for two. Incredible to think they went 12 minutes without a field goal or in the ball game. Three-point game, and Stewart back to the line for a one-and-one. One. Jim, how about the shot at the end of the half? You know, when you start thinking about it, here was... Jerry Stackhouse showing how he can power to the basket. But North Carolina was the team with 3.4 seconds that had a chance to extend their lead. That was a huge turnaround. On the eighth team foul, the next one also will be a one and one Stewart this time. Long. No! A three to tie. Carolina on an eight-nothing run. 
Williams. Rebound to Thurman. Kind of surprised that he took that that early. But he picks it off. Calabria. Could it be at long last? No, he'll drive to the hole. Wallace hammered. And he'll go to the line for two. Good idea, Jim. A lot of time on the clock since you are going to foul to put them on the line. Go for two points here. One eleven remaining. Wallace, if he makes them both, will trim the lead to one. Arkansas just moments ago, it seems, up 11. 11 and pulling away at 11, Jim. His mother, Jackie. chases it down big double team in the corner and they take a timeout timeout carolina calabria almost tipped it in carolina basketball down only two with 104 remaining four teams in this tournament we're down to three with 64 seconds remaining who will join ucla on Monday night, Billy, what about the final 104? The guy who will join UCLA is the guy that makes free throws the rest of the way. North Carolina now can afford to play solid defense, Jim, but they will go for steals. They have they find themselves in a position with possession of the ball now, so obviously if they could take a lead with a three, it puts Arkansas in a tough spot. If they can just tie it up, they can go back and play solid defense. Very important that they score here. And Arkansas probably saying, how is this possible? So they were up playing solid defense, great offense. North Carolina couldn't score for almost 13 minutes. And now Arkansas finds themselves, as they did against Kentucky in the SEC tournament, wondering how did they ever get in this kind of position. Steve Smith had a few unbelievable comebacks, as oh, you Jim, would expect. The this year alone, the Duke game, of the Wake Forest game in Winston-Salem. Of course, over the years, some... Incredible comebacks. Calabria draws Corliss outside. A lot of time, man-to-man -man defense here. Stackhouse driving. Clear out. Stackhouse to the line to tie it up. That was a set play. Jerry Stackhouse, one and one. And Jim, he got some pretty good one-on-one -on -one training this year. Yes. When he went one-on-one -on -one with Michael Jordan. He yep. says the score was about 18 to 10, but just the fact to go one-on-one -on -one with Jordan would give you a lot of confidence. That was when Michael showed up in Chapel Hill for a practice in early January. Now two free throws to tie it. Williamson picked up his fourth with that foul. Oh! See if Arkansas does a better job blocking out. Remember on the last one, Calabria almost got a piece. 69-68. Arkansas should look to score against this pressure. Oh, Stackhouse almost got to it. One more foul for a one and one. Would be a one and one. They don't want to put Scotty Thurman on the line. Dean Smith says no foul. Dean Smith wanted no foul. He wanted to have the opportunity, Jim, to have the ball with 10 seconds to go. That was the difference, differential on the time clock and the shot clock. So he just wanted to play solid defense there. Well, this will be a one and one for Clint McDaniel. Almost 76% from the line. Stewart has missed the last two front ends of the one and one. Well, it still gives North Carolina even he makes him a chance to go for a three. Looked pretty cool on that one, didn't he? Kid from Tulsa who grew up worshiping the Tulsa coach at that time, Nolan Richardson. Gives him a three-point lead. Now they got to think three, but take a two and foul if you have to. Calabria, Beck took it away and calls a timeout. No, they say first, a tie-up situation. So, and it's going to be North Carolina getting it back. Corey Beck can't believe the call. 
and I agree with him, Jim. I think that, number one, I think he had the timeout. And number two, if he didn't, I think he got fouled. Now, here you see Beck on the floor. There's no question that's a foul if it's not a timeout. It can't be a jump ball. Timeout, Arkansas, granted. Carolina basketball because they had the arrow. They did not grant the timeout right away to Corey Beck. One timeout apiece. And Billy, this I, looks like a missed call. I, a I, 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 no question about it, Jim. Here's Beck on the ball. Now you see a foul on Calabria. Beck then calls for the timeout. There's no foul called. There's no timeout call. And now Calabria gets an opportunity to call it a hell ball. Carolina had the arrow, so they get the ball back. Carolina. Big call for Carolina. We'll inbound it now with Calabria. Carolina down three. With 18 to go, you almost got to go for the three. And obviously Arkansas knows that. And who do they put? McDaniel on Williams. And he will really be shading him. Good. Probably will not leave him even if McGinnis makes penetration inside. You got Scotty Thurman on Calabria. Well, Calabria, their hottest three-point shooter on the season. 0 for 8 today. Could he find a way to break out of it now? Got to get the ball in bounds. But see if Stackhouse strikes to take him again. Williams. McDaniel pulls it down. Seven and a half to go. And McDaniel will shoot two now. Double bonus rest of the way for Arkansas. Jim, with that much time, you think you can still get a good two and foul anyway, as opposed to taking the bad three. It's a little bit out of Donald Williams' range. Donald Williams, who the first guard since Gail Goodrich to average 25 in the final four, a little bit out of range on that jumper. McDaniel, who hit two big ones in a one-on-one -on -one situation moments ago, this time with two. Sub in for Carolina, Pat Sullivan, Carolina five down with 7.5 remaining. I think they're going to go long to Wallace. Stackhouse coming out of the game right now. See if they're going to try to go long to Wallace, pick up a quick foul. Sullivan runs the baseline, flings it. That's the idea. To Wallace, Corvus retrieves it. And Arkansas is heading to Monday night for the chance to repeat. They'll count the basket at the end for Corliss. Monday night, the Razorbacks looking for the repeat. Well, a guy, a team that repeated often, UCLA, goes up against somebody that would like to have their first. Great tournament wins now for Arkansas. And Richardson can add Dean Smith to his list of coaching victims. Terrific job by Arkansas in the second half. Getting the ball to Corliss Williamson. And he was the key and set the stage for the excellent shot selection. And then that suffocating defense that kept Carolina from a field goal for almost 13 minutes. Arkansas was up 11. They saw that lead shrink to one. They always find a way to make you uh, hang on to the end. But it's UCLA and Arkansas set for the Monday night final in Seattle. The bright lights of the Emerald City have hosted a jewel of a final four. And there's no place like Dome for UCLA and now for Arkansas, beating North Carolina tonight here in Seattle. Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time, prelude to a championship. Quinn and Coach K and I will discuss the game and the night. And then the NCAA Men's National Championship, Arkansas and UCLA, our Chevrolet players of the game. Donald Williams, a big night, 19 points, six rebounds, and Corliss Williamson. 21 points, 10 rebounds. Let's say hello to him along with the coach. And now here's Jim Nance. Jim. 
Well, the last two most outstanding players at the final four, the Chevrolet players of the game, but Corliss Williamson, 19 of your 21 in the second half. What was the difference in the second half for you guys? Well, the second half, we just came out, we played smart basketball. Um, we were taking some bad shots in the first half. I think the second half, we executed our uh, offense well, and we were able to shut them down a little bit on the defensive end. You know, speaking of shutting them down, Nolan, your team held Carolina to only one field goal made in the last 15 minutes and 10 seconds. You know, uh, Carolina's a very good basketball team, no question about it. I thought our, our team wore them down. You know, those guys, were their shots weren't falling like it was at first. And, and that has been our trademark all year. Nolan, going to that bench in the first half, like you always have the confidence to do that, what did you say at halftime in regard to how you were going to change things around? Well, the thing that was really bad, Billy, is that we, we took half of our shots were threes, and I told him, I said, you got to remember the Kentucky game. You know, execution, we got an inside game. And so uh, we got to go and, and do that and make our defense pay off because uh, there's no way they can stay with you from a defensive standpoint with the wear and tear that we're gonna put on you. I thought my two big kids came in and gave Corliss them a rest, and, and along with Davor Remack. Remack is that, I mean, that was the difference in the ball game. We were very fresh leg. I think we got very tentative though when we got the 10 or 11 point lead, we, we stopped attacking. Did you look up at the clock like we did and say, hey, wait a second, how was North Carolina back in this one? Well, one thing about us, boy, we, what we call the cardiac kids, well, we tried to do it again. You've done it, you're, in, <laughs> you're right where you wanna be. Right. All right, guys, congratulations. We'll see you Monday night, Nolan and Corliss. They'll be playing for the national championship in the game against the Bruins. And let's send it back over to Pat O'Brien. All right, Jim, thank you very much. They wore him down, didn't they, Quinn? I, I don't think there's any question about it. They wore him down. When you look at him, when you're able to sit Corliss Williamson down three or four or five minutes and able to then bring him back in the game, he got his hand on one ball, got a basket. He chased another one down. The Rasheed Wallace couldn't even get to. They did. They just wore him down. I was talking to Coach Richardson earlier, and I said, nothing's easy. And he was, like, signaling that. You, you got that right. I mean, this has been a tough tournament for him. He's still here. Yeah, I think when you look at our and so you say hearts, guts, defense, and it comes from the guy on top. You don't have that unless the guy on top has some guts. And when he took those three guys out and left them out for three or four minutes to give them some rest, his kids responded, that took guts. And nobody knows more about that than you. We'll be back to talk about Monday's matchup right after this. Stay with us.